Our next speaker is Nick Valentine. Uh, he's going to be speaking about recreating the tank trams of WW1. Thank you very much. Okay, so there is a green garden shed on wheels positioned outside John Dalton building. That is meant to be the tank tram, and that is my fault. Since you, leaving university, a lot of my friends have bought houses, they've got married, they've had children. I've partially completed a tank tram project. So, a little, bit, a little more about me. So, I'm an engineer for the civil service with a background in robotics. I studied at the University of Salford, so not that far away. I'm an active I'm a key volunteer, and today I'm here representing the Manchester Association of Engineers. And I'm also an army reservist. So, to, just to destroy any trust that you might have had in me, the title of my talk is a complete lie. I'm not going to talk about the tank trams of World War I, okay? The reason for that being that we don't really know a huge amount about them. What I am going to do is I'm going to tell a story. And the reason behind that is to tell you guys and to give you the message that you've all got skills. And you can use those to provide social impact and um, learn new skills at the same time. That's what I want to get across. So, I've said I'm going to tell a story, once upon a time. So, 2013, I'm studying mechanical engineering at the University of Salford, and I'm coming to the end of an industrial placement year at National Grid. Um, my mentor just happened to be Mr. Carl Johnstone, who you met earlier. And around that time, I was offered a poison chalice. I was offered leadership of the Salford University Engineers Union, so the engineering society at the University of Salford. Around that time, people wanted, the students and our members wanted more practical experience. And we were wondering how we're going to provide that. A lot of people said formula student. At that time, that wasn't the solution. The university weren't particularly supportive, and we didn't have the funding to be able to do that. So we had to look around for different projects. And I was volunteering at Heaton Park Tramway. I approached one of the, the leadership there, uh, a man by the name of Derek Shepherd in his early 80s at the time. And I said, if you had extra resource, extra resources, what would you do? If you could run any project, what would you do? And at that time, the centenary, the commemorations of the First World War were coming up. And he said, if I could do anything, I would recreate a tank tram. And I said, great, let's do it. Let, um, let's build a tank tram. Let's do it. Tank tram, tank tram. Sorry, what's a tank tram? So, a little bit of context. During the First World War, the government wanted to get the public more involved in the war effort. So it did that by getting them to donate to the war effort. Around this time, so towards the end of the war, um, they would send tanks around the towns on tours, and they would ask people to come and donate money to the, to the tanks in order to buy more tanks. Those, those cities that couldn't get a real tank a lot of towns and cities in the UK had a corporation tramway. So any, any city that couldn't get a real tank, they would dress up, um, they'd dress up one of their trams as a tank. And the, the idea is absurd. Can you imagine today in Manchester city centre, someone putting fake rocket launchers on a Metrolink tram and asking you to donate money to it? The idea is ridiculous. Well, at this time, they thought that that, was, that kind of propaganda was appropriate. And people gladly gave money to it. What you can see there, so the top one, uh, that is Blackpool, and the one below it is, uh, is Burnley. Uh, and these were only temporary structures. That's why we don't know a huge amount about them. They're made of canvas and wood and paint. Um, and Blackpool's was called Albert. And that's something that we've continued in our project because that's where we got the chassis for the vehicle. So Blackpool very, very quickly loaned us a, sh a chassis and said, you can use this for your project. And now that's all well and good, but we're going to be based at Heaton Park Tramway. How are we going to get it to, to, to where we're located? We need money. So we went to the university and said, we've got this project, we're going to commemorate the First World War, and we want to teach students new skills. 
and they directed us to an organization called Unlimited. Now, Unlimited, they provide grants to social entrepreneurs and social enterprises. So anything that has value to society, uh, a, a business, businesses that provide benefit to society, they can provide grants. Uh, and we got about £300 from them at what, what's known as a Try It Award. And that enabled us to pay for the, the haulage to get the bogey to the chassis to Heaton Park and pro, uh, provide things like uh, personal pro protective equipment as well. So we've got the money and we've got it to Heaton Park. So what we're going to do? Well, we've set about refurbishing the chassis. And we're, as mechanical engineers, aero, civil, we're learning new skills. We're, we're getting the rust off it. We're taking it apart and we're putting it back together and we're, we're painting it. So we're, we're doing practical things. We're getting hands-on and we're learning new things. But it's not just the practical element that we learn. How are you going to motivate your, your volunteers to come down? How do you show them the value of taking part in a project like this? That's actually the hardest bit. Getting down there and scraping rust off a bit of metal isn't fundamentally that hard. But inspiring people to take part in a, in a project, that's a real skill. So we were learning all this at the same time, and that certainly helped me in my, my career going forward. And we spent about a year um, refurbishing the chassis. It took that long in between, in between our studies. Um, the gentleman on the right-hand side is Abdu, and he is, in the room, he is in the room today, so a bit more about him, him later. But what you'll notice is there's no tank on top of that chassis, we paid, paid 300 quid to get it to Heaton Park, but we're going to need more money. And if you strip away all the waffle, that is essentially what I sent to the Heritage Lottery Fund. And they quite rightly told me to do one. Well, not in so many words, but what, that, what they actually said was, what are people going to learn from this? So what? We recognise that the project you're running has heritage value, but what are people actually going to learn by you doing this? And that was quite a big revelation to me. That switched how I thought. Up until that point, it had been all about me and the other volunteers. What am I going to learn? What skills am I going to get? But what value can you give to other people by running a project like that? And that was a complete switch in, in my mind. So we had to start thinking about outreach. How do people learn? What are people going to get from us doing this project? What can we give to them? And the University of Salford put us in touch with a man called Dr. Richard Talbot, who is actually a performance lecturer. So not, so, not something, someone you would associate with an engineering project. And he came up with all kinds of different workshops to, around performance, around the theme of propaganda and people's feelings during the First World War, the public perception of propaganda, workshops in schools. And again, that, was another, that, that linked something in my mind that you can use engineering to advance the arts. And that was not a link that I'd, that I'd thought up before. Up until that, then, it had been purely an engineering project. But that was an interesting link, and that was a valuable lesson for me. We're all technical people, but we can help people learn through, we can use our skills to educate and help people learn through the arts. And there was another concept that came up, and that was the Tank Tram as a Mobile Museum. And we'll come on to that in a little bit. But I am using my existing skills at the same time, okay? I'm learning more. But I'm using SolidWorks to design the vehicle. So we could select the materials that we wanted, the amount of materials that we needed, and then we could then put that cost together and send it to the Heritage Lottery Fund. So we've got a plan for our workshops, and we've got a cost for, for making the vehicle. So we applied for what's known as a Young Roots, a Heritage Lottery Fund Young Roots application. And as part of that, we had to submit um, some item of interest to them to prove that there were young people that wanted to take part in this project. And we 3D printed it. I've not got a photo of it, annoyingly. But we 3D printed a little model of a tank and put the thoughts of the people who wanted to take part of this inside the tank. And they've still got it in their office. And we, uh, we learned that on our engineering degrees, how to do 3D printing, how to do CAD. So we're using our existing skills to uh, advance this project. So we submit our, uh, our application, and we're waiting, and we wait. And then one day, a truck with a load of wood turns up to Heaton Park. And I think, oh my god, I've now, I've now actually got to do this. What have I done? So we start cutting, we start cutting the wood. We're learning new things. Um, and that was great, to finally get hands on and start building the body. Although, if I told that guy in the top left 
that it was going to take another five years before we got anywhere near done, he probably would have chopped his head off with the, with the saw. But, oh no, wrong. So I mentioned the mobile museum. Um, those are a series of graphic designed panels that um, graphi um, graphic design students designed at the University of Salford. Um, so those go interchangeable. So we could take those on and off at, almost at will. So if someone's got a story that they want to tell, um, be it, say, the local history of Salford or Indian soldiers during the First World War, if someone wants to use it as an art installation, someone wants to do STEM outreach, we can change those panels and the, the, the tank can change its skin and tell any story that you want it to. Um, so those are currently mounted. So it's out the front, and those panels are currently mounted, mounted on there. And if you want to know more about the tank trams and fundraising during the First World War, there's information on there. However, so it was all going well. I start my new job away from, from, from Manchester, and I hand, over to, I hand over to Abdu. And it's at that time that things get harder. We run out of space at Heaton Park, and they ask us to leave, so we have to go to the University of Salford. It became harder to recruit volunteers. As our contacts and our connections moved on, it became harder to recruit volunteers. We hadn't invested in those relationships. We hadn't in, uh, taken the time to inspire people and show people the value and get them on board, on board with the project. That was a failing on, on our part. But we still managed to put the tank up, what we'd done on display at the University of Salford, and, and, the, and the project rumbled on. So I'd moved away. We all still kept involved with the project, but it was very much a long distance relationship. And we had to move again. So the University of Salford, another setback said, you can't use this space anymore, you've got to move. You've got to find somewhere really quickly. It's not all just about the technical skills. You've got to be able to adapt and think about new solutions logistically. It's always the logistical stuff that, that does you over in the end, really. Um, so we managed to get it up to Blackpool and we managed to forge a new connection with Blackpool and the Fowl College. But the same problems, again, with the way the education system is, people don't have the time to invest in, in these things. It's a voluntary project. It's not a priority. So encouraging people to take part in these projects is hard. And again, like I said before, it's a skill. It's to show the value in these projects. And I found that managing from a distance, I was no longer based in Man Manchester or even the Northwest or even the UK. It was hard trying to manage that project. Really, if you're meant to be leading some, something, you need to be there with it. Communicating over the phone is hard. Communicating via email and WhatsApp is harder. You can't get the message across. And ultimately, we missed the centenary commemorations. We missed it. And in my mind, in our minds, that was a failure. But what did we learn from it? Again, like I've said, there are mitigating circumstances. This is a voluntary project. People aren't paid to do it. But you've got to be able to inspire them to take part and, and do it. And yeah, it's, it's hard. Things don't go to plan. We got moved twice. Things take longer than you expect them to. But as long as you learn and take, uh, you learn from those things, then it was always worthwhile doing. So where are we at now? We're almost finished. It's outside. You can, during the break, please come and have a look at it. I'll be standing out there uh, to answer any questions you've got. But we're thinking about what's next. We've nearly, we've nearly actually finished it. It's, all, it's basically in one, one piece. So we're starting to think about that outreach work again. We can use it as a mobile museum. We can use it to ta start telling those, those stories again. But of course, all of that is going to take more money. So why continue? Nick, you've just said that the project failed. We missed the centenary commemorations. Well, I think the people in that picture, the top one, their stories deserve to be told. And for us, this is about our stories as well. What stories do we want to tell? What message do we want to share with people? That's our future. We can still continue learning skills. And what have I learned? That definitely, I, think, I hope that's come through, but people are the most important part of your project. It's cliche, but it's true. You need to invest in those relationships and understand people's needs. Why are they taking part in your project? It's not about just the technical elements of things. It's, I've learned something completely different from what I thought I'd learn when I set out on this. It's much more about building teams. 
And in your project, I often now think about what benefit is, going to, is it going to have? What is the aim? What's the bigger picture? But also, you meet some great people doing this. And I've actually learned loads about my friends as well. So Wednesday, we, we transported it down from Blackpool on the motorway. The, my friend towed it with his Land Rover. And I was messaging people about this. And they said, Nick, this is crazy. And I said, I know it's great. I love it. <laughs> you find out more about your, friend, your friends. You, you can build relationships with other people. And most of all, it's fun and, re it's fun and rewarding. So I definitely get a sense of pride now that it's, that it's sat outside <laughs> here. I've got a sense of pride that, yeah, I helped out with that. My friends helped out with that. I've met some great people doing that. And now we can go forward and actually have some fun with it. And also that Chain is a great platform for, for sharing ideas. So if you do have an idea, if you want to share something, consider standing up here and sharing the, the message with people like yourselves. And yeah, get involved. So like I said, the story continues. The, the tank is a blank canvas. If you want to use it for an art installation, you want to do STEM outreach with it, whatever idea you have, get in touch and we can talk it through. I'm up for doing pretty much anything with it, really. And we want to share those stories as widely as possible. And we want people to develop their existing skills whilst, um, whilst learning new ones as well. So we do have a Facebook page. Um, the email address is up there. And any ideas that you have, yeah, please share them with us. So I started off and said that my talk was a lie. OK? And I said I, I was going to tell a story. Stories generally have messages. And my message is, well, what are you going to do? You all, have, you all have skills. Everyone has skills. You've all got drive. You've turned up on a Saturday early in the morning to hear people talk about engineering. And really, it doesn't matter what it is. If you're using those skills to benefit people, if you've got an idea, it doesn't really matter what it is. If you're using your skill to benefit wider society, it doesn't really matter what it is. I built a tank tram. It could, you could do whatever. And I also said that a lot of my friends since leaving uni, they've, they've bought houses, they've had children, they've got married. But when I look back, I've got a chapter in my story called Tank Tram, and they're not going to have that. So my question to you is, what chapter are you going to have in your story? I'm going to be, so please come out and have a look at it during the break. Um, and even as, as you're leaving, just spend 30, 30 seconds going and having a look at the tank tram. I'll be out there to answer any questions you have. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the rest of the day. Thank you for coming.